everybody? Today I'm going to go over a, a uh, argument that has been put forth by philosophers like Alvin Plantica uh, and others who have continued on from his work in the uh, 1960s and 70s. Uh, and it, this argument is called the modal ontological argument. I'm using the modal, but there are many people who just use another formulation of what we call the ontological argument. So I'm going to be trying to address what this argument is, what it isn't, and how we can go about explaining it to people um, that are not familiar with it. So let's just start right off the bat. Premise 1. It is possible that God exists. Premise 2. If it is possible God exists, then God exists in some possible worlds. Premise 3. If God exists in some possible worlds, then God exists in all possible worlds. 4. If God exists in all possible worlds, then God exists in an actual world, in the actual world. 5. If God exists in the actual world, then God exists. So, first let's go over some definitions to kind of help um, understand what this argument is trying to get at. So, what is meant by a possible world when I say that in these premises here? A possible world is a hypothetical way for philosophers to test an idea logically if it could exist in a world like ours or not exist in a world. Some would jump immediately into, from this argument and call it like a, an imagination type of game. So like, it, it's like trying to say that the greatest conceivable presentation or the greatest possible island uh, and say that these ideas will then invalidate the argument in one way or another when they try to formulate it in this idea. But the problem is this has nothing to do with any imagining. It's not an imagination game. It's about what's metaphysically possible. A greatest possible island can't exist because the greatest possible island is merely subjective to people. Some may want basketball goals on their island. Some may want a cruise ship or whatever that you would think of in this situation that you would like on your greatest possible island. So the formulation of calling this uh, an imagination argument is a failure, I say. Uh, and you can always one-up a presentation and you can always improve an island in one way or another. Another thing or example that people use to try to show that this argument is invalid is they would try to mock this argument by replacing the word God with the word unicorn. So the, the, the premises that I gave uh, just a minute ago, we, you know, they would just take that entire argument, instead of saying God, they would put the word unicorn in, just making it say, they, oh, it's possible that a unicorn exists. Many skeptics misunderstand this part of the argument because of how the word God is defined. In these types of arguments in philosophy, entities uh, are defined in three types of ways. One way is impossible, which is an entity that exists in no possible worlds. For example, there's no square circles on Jupiter. Another, which would be number two, is contingent entities, which is an entity that exists in some possible worlds, like a unicorn of some sort, or some material um, being somewhere. Another would, would, is what we call necessary. It has to exist in all possible worlds. But then we can look at the question about what does it actually mean to be necessary? What is necessary existence? Well, this would be things like abstract objects, like numbers or absolute truths, and shape definitions. Think of something like the number seven. The number seven exists necessarily. No one made it or created it. Six did not cause it to exist, and so on. You can go off of these ideas. So a necessary entity exists and cannot fail to exist. So God would have to be a necessary being, hence why God is shown to be a maximally great being in this argument. A maximally great being would have characteristics like love, justice, uh, power, and things like these, and would not have any corruption or any type of imperfection. Great making properties would entail necessity. God couldn't be contingent simply because he would only exist in some types of worlds, some possible worlds, W. This thought lines up with biblical theology. As we can see, 
uh, in, in the book of Colossians chapter 1. It says, By him all things were created, that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, and all things were created through him and for him. So thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe for more content like this. And let me know what you guys think down below.